Welcome to the uh, first part, uh, which is going to be our airbrush style. Let's go ahead and go up to File, and you can click Open, or you can double click on your background. It will bring up your open window. And go ahead and navigate to your digital painting folder. And inside of it, you should find a JPEG image called Line Art. Let's go ahead and open up the Line Art image. All right. The uh, Line Art image, the one that you'll notice right here, uh, this is going to be the one that we're going to be painting for all the styles. Uh, the main thing to keep in mind on this one is that when we're painting it, what we want to actually do is uh, we don't want to choose a different image every time. We want to have a constant. And if we have a constant while we're painting, we'll be able to find out. We, we can look directly at the style itself and find out whether or not it's the style that you're interested in. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that through all five different styles we're going to be approaching, uh, the main thing is not necessarily to do um, to take away each one of the styles and perfect it. It's, it's more for you to actually go, okay, I like parts of this style and I like parts of this style, and start combining them together, and, so that you can kind of create um, the style, the look that you're you're really wanting to define yourself uh, as when it comes to painting digitally. Uh, the image that we have here, um, this is a simple picture by Eric Walker. Uh, we have this one set up in place for one character shot here. Our main focus is going to be on this character. The uh, secondary focus is going to be on the character in the uh, background. And every time we get done with one of these paintings, uh, it's going to be requested of you to actually go back in and do the exact same steps that we did for this one, but actually on this character. So to begin with, let's go ahead and uh, start with the airbrush style. Uh, we'll go over to our layers tab and just double click on the background. And let's go ahead and rename this file. Instead of being the uh, uh, background image, uh, we'll just go ahead and call this one our line art. All right. Let's go ahead and create a, um, a new layer. And this layer, we're going to just call this one, uh, this is going to be our mask. All right. And the mask layer, go ahead and drag it below your line art. And before we forget, let's go ahead and left click on the line art uh, layer. And for your blending mode type, go ahead and choose, uh, we'll go ahead and do the uh, overlay. All right, and then on the mask layer, uh, inside your document, let's go ahead and go to our brush tool. And for the brush type, let's be sure we're just working with gray tones over here. Um, what we're going to do with the mask layer is actually outline all the elements and the pieces that we need to work with. So we'll start off uh, by actually doing about a uh, let's see, our RGB is going to be 167. Go ahead and click OK on this. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, mask layer piece here, and we're just going to brush on uh, this one. Be sure that your opacity is up to 100%. Make sure your flow is all the way up. Be sure your brush, doing the mask, all we're interested in is actually just doing a hard brush. So be sure you've got a hard brush set up. Let's be sure that we have, looks like we need to make sure this is on multiply then. There we go. And for our mask, um, if you notice, just kind of watch what I'm doing here is that I'm going to paint, I'm going to go ahead and paint over the eye, but we're going to be painting another layer on top of it with a, uh, uh, a different tone for the eye, but I'm just going to paint over all the skin elements. So wherever you see skin, go ahead and just paint over it. There we go. So a lot of times you may hear someone say it's a mask. Uh, some people might actually might call it like a flat. Uh, that if they flat colors, they're just putting in the uh, the base colors for a character and for an image. So for instance, if you were doing flats for a comic book, uh, you would take if this character had a, a certain level of flesh tone, that would be the color that would would that would uh, be put in. Uh, if the character had a certain color for the costume, that's the color that would be put in. It wouldn't be shades of color, it would just be the uh, the base color that defines the character. Alright, so we've got our first layer here. Uh, let's go ahead and open up our color again. And this time around, let's choose a little bit lighter of a tone. Now we want to change in terms of the, uh, the color difference. Uh, it all depends on your tolerance level for your selection mode type. Uh, if I'm using my the uh, magic wand tool, my tolerance at 20. If the uh, 
if the gray tones between aren't high enough then the tolerance is just going to select the whole thing so just be sure that you choose a tolerance level as well as a color that will uh, work well together so same layer here we're not going to go to a different layer um, I'm going to go in here and I'm actually just going to paint in the uh, the area where the eyes are going to be all right if you want to add to that layer you can always do like the uh, the teeth so we'll paint in the area for the teeth here all right so the next one we want to do we'll go ahead and uh, do one more for the outlining area uh, of the uh, the helmet so let's go ahead and open up our color again and we'll choose a little bit darker of a tone here all right let's go ahead and paint all this in and be sure that you're careful around the edges this is one of those things where you want to stay inside the lines uh, when you do your selection if if you're a painter outside the line your selection is going to be outside the line as well All right. And we'll grab the top of the uh, the helmet up here as well. So just another reminder is that what we're going to be looking at uh, through these is it's going to be looking at the steps and the approach to actually uh, achieving this type of a style. For instance, like for the airbrush style of getting a soft fill to it. Um, we're going to look at how to set up layers, how many layers you may need to actually create this type of uh, uh, this look and feeling for it. Um, main thing to remember though is that as we go along with this one, if it's something new to you, if you haven't done this type of uh, uh, painting before, then be sure, go back, try it again. Uh, it's, it's usually an okay thing to do it the first time through. You'll, you'll have an idea of what the approach is for it, but if you can do it a couple more times to the point where you're not really having to think about what are the next steps, but you can think about getting back to just being an artist and, and uh, putting in color where you want it, then you'll probably be able to form a little bit better opinion about uh, the type of style it is and uh, whether or not you really like it or whether or not it's uh, just not something that's really suited for you. Alright. I think we're finished with the uh, with the mask. If you want, just uh, left click on the uh, line art, the visibility. Now, if you notice, do you see all the little open holes here and there, all over the place? Go ahead and click on your line art again. So there's areas where the black line actually comes down. So if we're if we're okay and it's hidden behind the black line, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, it's usually just a good idea to double check though, because if there are certain areas and it's like, well. I'm going to look at this area right here and if I turn the layer back on and I see that I am actually missing that part um, then I would want to go back in and touch it up. We're going to be using this mask layer for all, um, all the different styles so be sure to actually uh, refine the uh, mask layer before we continue on this. Let's go ahead and save this file out as well. So go ahead and push control S and this one in, instead of calling it line art PSD uh, we'll just call this one uh, digital um, digital painting. All right, and let's just save it inside that folder. Okay, so we have our mask layer set up. We've got our line art uh, with the multiply for the blending mode. Uh, go ahead and left click on your mask layer, and let's go ahead and start off by creating a new layer. And this first layer we're going to do. We're going to call this one now. We're going to start being a little bit more organized with our layers uh, as compared to previous um, assignments. This one we're going to call this one skin uh, base tone. So the base tone, um, this can also be called like a skin medium tone. This is the, if you were to describe a person without without any type of lighting like bright lighting or shadows, is that one skin tone that kind of represents the person. Now granted, on any person you're going to have any given number of actual different colors but for for working on concept art we need to choose one to go with and then we can add additional colors to it so we'll say skin base tone I'll we'll go ahead and click OK on this alright so the skin base tone for this character um, if we go over to our swatches um, yours may be on either color or styles just left, uh, left click on the uh, swatches tab 
Now, we're going to go ahead and open up a new one. Uh, go ahead and click on your little drop down arrow right here. And if you go over to load swatches, actually, let's just do replay swatches. So we'll do replay swatches. And when you click on replay swatches, um, inside your folder, um, there's an option for a swatch example color set. You can actually just navigate to that folder and then choose the swatch example color set. And also just to note, you see the one that says empty swatches? Um, we've actually added this one for you. This is an empty uh, library set for you so that you can create your own from it. So we have the, the, we have the uh, swatch example. We'll go ahead and click on load. And when it comes up, what you should see are a whole bunch of different skin tone types as well as a gradient type. Uh, you've got your a couple of warm colors and gray color and uh, cool colors from it. Um, right next to the uh, swatches again, click on the drop down. And inside of it, there's a button that says small thumbnails, large, small list, and large list. Go ahead and click on the uh, small list. All right, um, we're gonna we're gonna base this off of the name itself. That way, it's a little bit easier to know which one uh, all of us are working on. So, if you can go through this, you'll notice everything is labeled uh, certain names. There's a uh, there's a list further down here that has the uh, skin two, skin three, um, and then even further down, I believe there's just there's about what is this ten? I think yeah, nine nine different examples for skin tones for a uh, what we would consider a base tone uh, that you can also start with. All right, so we'll scroll back up to the top. Uh, up at the very top, there's one that's called Skin Medium. Go ahead and left click on Skin Medium. And with it selected, now if I'm going into my base tone, I could go in here and do this. And all of a sudden, I realize I'm going outside the pixel range over here, and I'm actually getting into the uh, uh, the armor part. We want to go on our, we want to left click on our mask, and using our wand tool, just left click. So when you left click on this, you'll notice that you actually select uh, just the gray area. So the helmet's not selected, the eye's not selected, it's just simply the uh, uh, the face skin. So go ahead and go back up to skin base tone. Now working on this, one of the things you don't really want to do, at least uh, personally I don't like doing it, is leaving the, uh, the lines up while I'm painting. I'm just going to push control H. Now it's going to hide it. Don't forget, it's hidden. So if I'm outside of this area with a brush, I can't brush anything. So if you don't see anything in your selection area, but you can't brush anything, uh, always a good idea. Just simply uh, push Control D to drop or Control H to unhide. So with the skin base tone, hard brush, opacity set to 100, flow to 100. Um, let's go ahead and just fill this entire thing up with uh, with the base skin tone. At this point, we're not trying to create any shadows. We're not trying to create anything lighter or darker. We want the flat tone that just says, this is the color of our character. All right. So we've got that one done. Let's go ahead and uh, go into the next step. Uh, create a new layer. And with the new layer, we'll call this one skin medium light. All right. And go ahead and push OK on this. Now on the skin medium light, uh, if we go over here, we're going to see one that's called, let's see, we'll choose the, uh, the skin, actually we've got a skin base tone here. Um, actually, let's go ahead and click on the skin medium. I kind of like to start with the skin medium on this one. And then choose your colors right there, your color picker. We'll go ahead and just choose a little bit extra color here. So we're going to go up, uh, our RGB is going to be 237, 187, 148. All right, and with this one, um, now if I go in here like this, let's let's go and take a look real fast to see how it works. If I go in and do this to it, oh, this is this is a hard stroke. It's got a very defining edge to it. Uh, it definitely stands out. <laughs> um, now, if I go in and I just go ahead and go up to our brushes. Let's say, for instance, we choose a soft edge brush. And we'll do the same thing again, though. We'll brush across. Now, it's not as hard because of the uh, soft edge, the feather on it. It actually softens the two and kind of blends them together. However, it's still pretty. It's still pretty uh, dominant in terms of the color transition. Um, let's go ahead and push this Control Z again. Now, when you're working on your brush, when you're doing this type of, for a lot of styles, when you work on them, 
uh, your opacity setting. Uh, let's take the opacity and let's drag this down and we'll start off around 20%, uh, 19, 20% somewhere around there. And then inside of here, just single left click and stroke. Okay, now stroke a couple of times. Alright, so if you notice while you were stroking, or at least while I was stroking, um, I had to actually do several strokes before it started to show up. Uh, this type of a method, uh, on some for, for some instances, one of the reasons why this is kind of a good method to go by is that it allows you to not have to be completely confident with your stroke the first time through. Um, I can actually stroke four or five times before I start to see something. Um, it kind of allows me just to really know whether or not I want that area, but also I can kind of get picky about just the overall uh, effect from it. Now, before we get started any further, I'm going to make one more new layer, but this is just going to be a practice to show you on uh, a part that we're going to talk about here. Alright, let me drop a tone in here. Oops. And drop this real quick. All right. So on this one, uh, what we want to do is actually look at one thing here. So on layer one, um, what I want to do is actually just provide you with a, a basic lighting scheme that we're going to go with. So we'll grab shadow from here. Now with our brush, I'll go ahead and take the brush down a little bit. Now when it comes to lighting, something that we want to take a look at, we need to really understand uh, where the artist was coming from. Uh, when it comes to lighting, we're, we're basing this you know, not off of our own picture, so we don't really know um, exactly what the person was thinking of. Uh, looking at this one though, we have a, looks like we've got a shadow coming in here. So if you notice this area, takes up a little bit more. Um, this area is definitely in the uh, on the darker end of the shadows. Let's go all the way down with it. All right. So we have this area certainly is going to be darker. If you notice, the uh, the helmet itself casts a heavy shadow across, and you have a heavier shadow coming here. So it looks like we're probably going to have a light source slightly in front of the character. Let me just draw it over here since it's and beyond that, I'll go ahead and push Control D to drop it. Um, we've got a light source coming in here, and then we have kind of a light source from above. So when we're actually sketching out the character, I'll just put in some heavier shadows here so you can see exactly what we're talking about. Uh, if we have this area basically in shadow. Alright. So this area, if it's in shadow, then something that we want to make sure we're we're looking at while we're actually painting it is not just the shadow, but where's the light source coming from? So is there actually a light source? It looks like it because uh, we have a, in the lines we kind of indicate that this is more of a softer shadow, it's not a hard black shadow coming in. Um, now on the same hand, the uh, lighter areas uh, if the light's coming in from right here and it's coming down and it's hitting, then it's going to hit all the higher recess. It's going to hit all the higher planes of the face, which means it would hit here. You might get a few hits right here under the eyelid. You're probably going to get a hit right here. There's a good chance you'll get something right here. Um, trailing down the nose, you may get one on either side. The uh, circle shape right there, it looks like it might actually be a, a highlight coming off of the nose for it maybe a little bit of piece here and then depending on the wrinkle pattern you might actually catch uh, right up on the ridge of it for each side All right. so if we're going to define those areas as our basically our light and our shadow we have the uh, we have the darker shadow planes here we've got the brighter ones here coming down from the light source right here uh, Let's keep this in mind. This is something that we need to really focus on is that if this is our pattern, this is where we're going to be looking into. When we start working on the uh, the brighter skin tones, the shadow skin tones, uh, we want to make sure that we're trying to follow that light source. 
something that's going to stand out on your artwork is that the moment you start uh, deviating from a solid light source and you just kind of start throwing um, you know colors here and colors there uh, those who are really going to be those who look at your work and uh, whether it's uh, professionals or even uh, uh, well probably more more professional side are going to notice they're going to see that uh, you you don't really have a defined light source um, so what we want to do uh, using this we can hide it uh, if you need it you can just go back to it we'll go ahead and just call this one instead of layer one we'll just call this one lighting scheme so let's go ahead and go back to here and we'll uh, we'll select the uh, face again and hide it alright so for the uh, skin medium let me go ahead and grab that one real fast I actually still have it up here alright so for this one uh, our brushes again we did the uh, uh, the soft soft brush uh, we've got opacity we'll set our opacity back down to about anywhere between uh, uh, 12 to 20 range uh, you should be okay with and that one part of it is just yourself just defining you know how hard you have to stroke if you find yourself stroking a hundred times take the opacity up <laughs> so in here I know that my light source for my light scheme is in this area so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to click a few times now remember this isn't going to create an instant uh, uh, roundness to it we're actually going to be working that over but I'm going to come in I'm going to brush in where I think the uh, the lighter tone is going to come into play here and if you notice my uh, my brush itself is going to go up and down I'm going to be changing the size of it depending on the area I'm in so for instance when I'm underneath the eye um, I'm going to take it down I'm currently at nine for the brush stroke on it um, I'm going to do a couple of brush, uh, brush strokes here a couple of them right here uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that when you're actually working on this tone um, this is a little bit broader of a range tone for, and by that what I mean is that don't do just a little tiny spot don't do something like just this big you, you want to go large with it because in order to have that kind of a gradient feel to it, have a little bit more volume to it, you're going to be adding another brighter tone here, you're going to be adding another one after that, um, just to really help layer it up. So, we'll hit the areas where it looks like the uh, uh, the lighting was coming in. We've got those areas coming in pretty good. We'll catch a little bit right here on the one side of the nose, and then We'll do a stroke going down the uh, top of the nose, just on the bridge area, and going down through it. Uh, the nostril wing on the side might catch a little bit as well, so we'll go ahead and add that into it. All right, and then right up here. Now, the other thing that you've got to realize is that if you haven't done a face before, um, if you haven't drawn one, if you haven't studied one, uh, or even for that matter, even painted one, um, then so many of these strokes are going to seem very foreign to you because you're not going to understand where the uh, where the lighting source actually hits. Um, if that's the case, be sure uh, pick up a book on it, uh, do more life drawing on it, make sure you to study the the actual lighting patterns that are going into it. That way, when you're working on your own, you can just simply recall it from memory and you'll be able to work on it. You don't have to have the uh, reference next to you all the time. Um, however, if you need reference. Uh, be sure to use it. All right, so we've got our skin medium light going for us. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. And the new layer for this one is going to be skin medium dark. All right. A skin medium dark, uh, we've got one right here. So we'll go ahead and left click on it. And for this one, let's go ahead and start off with the, the uh, opacity at 18 for a moment and go ahead and just do a brush stroke uh, inside of it to see what it's going to do. And if you notice one brush stroke is actually pretty heavy um, so I'm going to actually just hit control Z real quick we'll take our opacity on this one probably down to about uh, anywhere between 10 to 12 now something to point out and it, it's something that's more just of a preference for any artist is that we're we'll going to take this up to 100 for a moment uh, if you don't understand what flow does, um, flow for the airbrush tool We'll show you now without flow on. If I click on the opacity and I've got it up to 100, I'm going to left click and hold. Oops, be sure to, I'm going to go ahead and drop this real quick. 
Uh, if I left click and hold, do you notice that this just simply drops the color on there for me like that? Um, now if I take and turn the airbrush tool on, and I left click and hold, notice what's happening. I'm single clicking, but it's actually building up as it goes. So just like an airbrush, when you pull the trigger on the airbrush, um, you're going to be putting the, uh, the paint on it. It's going to be a continuous flow until it goes as much as it can. The flow on this, if I take this down, this is very similar to the, uh, the pressure of the air coming out of it. Now if I left click and hold, it's going to be slower out at coming. So instead of just coming out really fast, it just takes the flow, the speed of it down more. So if you always wondered about the difference between those two, uh, that's the difference on it. If you turn off your airbrush and you're just using your opacity, then it's just going to be a continuous flow coming out. If you're going to do it the other way, then you'll have that option. Alright, so uh, back to the opacity one. Let's go ahead and delete the part. And we'll go back to our mask again. So for the uh, using the brush tool, taking the opacity down, I said we'll take it down to about a 10%. And again, the reason we're doing that is that we want control of it. Um, I want to be able to stroke five or six times, not worry about my first stroke being the stroke for it. Now when we're setting in for uh, for a darker medium tone here, we're actually talking about the, the planes where the light uh, to the dark areas are going to start occurring. Uh, one of those is very similar. We'll go ahead and start in on this because it's um, it's very much right in the center of the uh, of the face in terms of where the light plane, where you can really see the light plane hitting and the shadow plane hitting. Um, right on the cheek area, if you notice this, the uh, the very center line right through here, kind of like the crest of it, this would be the the major transition area, uh, meaning that above it is going to be a medium tone to a light tone and then even to like a really bright tone and then from below it you will go from a medium tone to a dark tone to a shadow possibly to a uh, a highlight type of shadow to it uh, so when you're actually stroking across here be sure to be thinking about that if I go right here and all I do is create um, we'll say for instance all we do is just this area only if I do just this area only, I've really kind of done an injustice to myself because I have a plane that goes across here and no transition, it just simply jumps down to here. So if we're trying to keep things smooth, then we want to be sure to um, actually add a little bit softer of a transition between the two. So I'll go ahead and go for a little bit larger of a brush. We're going to start with about a, a 60 brush, 50 to 60 range, and just left click and stroke across. All right. So if you notice, I'm going about midways, but both sides are going uh, one on this side, one on this side. All right. And then if we like it, then we'll keep going. Now remember, if I was to do this too hard, and the uh, the whole layer was just really dark, you can always go over to your opacity in your layers tab, and you can just drag your opacity down this way, and that way it actually helps blend it as well. So sometimes I have colors where I'm. I really want to just put the full intensity of the color and I know ahead of time that I'm just going to go back into the uh, opacity on the layer and actually change it from there. Alright, so we're going to go in here and stroke around until we actually get a little bit more of a darker layer going here. So even if we know, like for instance, this very edge right here, even if we have a highlight coming later, um, we're going to go ahead and create the darker tones now and then we'll just go back with a new layer on top and uh, create highlights and stuff for it. Alright, so if you're stroking a lot and you feel like you're not being able to put enough color down, remember you can always just go back in and uh, uh, increase the opacity for the brush. Alright, so right now I'm going with just a really big brush. I'm not going in for any small defining areas or anything. If you jump into the small details too early, uh, it's really going to be kind of a bad choice for you. Let's focus on the large areas first, and then when we feel like we've captured everything we need to, then we'll take our time and actually focus in on some of the smaller details. Alright, so we're getting some of the strokes in here. 
looking pretty good. Um, we basically are setting into place three different uh, hues. There we go. And then underneath this, we'll do a couple more strokes here. And I don't know if you can hear it on the uh, uh, over the microphone or not. Um, with the tapping uh, from the uh, Cintiq with the the pin, is that there's typically you'll you'll find yourself doing a lot of tapping. Uh, if you're just doing a single stroke um, and you have your opacity set up really high, then you may only do one or two strokes with it. Uh, but if you have it low like this one is, um, be sure that you're doing a lot of tapping constantly to uh, put the color in. All right, so we've got the base uh, skin tone. We've got our medium light. Now we've got our medium dark. Now if you notice also, we're going from a, a light to a dark. Um, some people love to go from dark to light. Some people like to start this in the uh, the middle and go both ways. Some people like to start from a light and go to a dark. It, a lot of different approaches for it. Um, we're starting with just the, the middle of the road and going both ways. Uh, if you want to try just to see what, if you like different approaches, try making it the darkest tone first and building out all of the, uh, uh, the brighter elements to it um, after that. Alright, so if we have our skin medium dark, uh, the next thing we want to do is the skin light. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. And we'll just call this one skin light. All right. Now the skin light, uh, we're actually going to use the one that says skin bright right here. So then just left click on your swatches up there for it. And for this one, um, something to think about is that when it comes to when when a light uh, surface is going to be hitting an area, there's an attenuation that ha that occurs with it. And attenuation is basically think of it as a fall off. Um, you'll have a brighter spot uh, here. Let me turn this up so you can see it easier. You'll have a really bright spot, say for instance here, but there's going to be a fall off coming down, and the fall off is going to be lighter and lighter and lighter until it disappears. So when, when you think about light hitting the surface, it's not going to hit the surface and be equal all the way across, but where it hits the surface directly is going to be the brightest spot. And then outside of that, you're going to have a fall off range. And then that's going to be the area where, um, just for the same reason why we're using more of an airbrush and a soft, is it will build up with a larger soft area and then start building into it with a brighter area. Um, before we go into this stage, I just want to do one more thing with my skin medium uh, tone. Actually, with the dark. Um, let me make sure I get. There we go. Uh, right in here for the wrinkles. All right. Actually, let's grab for that tone. And let me make sure I get this part as well. And I'm going to go a little heavier on this one. We'll come back in and uh, soften it up when we start doing a different color. All right. Okay, there we go. So let's see, we'll go ahead and go back to our skin light and skin bright on this one. And for this one, let's go ahead and again, we want to kind of look at the uh, the brighter surfaces we have defined, and we just want to um, add to those a bit more. Now, something to think about is that, do you see the, uh, the transition right here between the light surface and the dark surface? Uh, in terms of gradients, if you're trying to make something feel round, then you're going to have a very smooth gradient. You're going to go from a dark to a medium to a light to a medium to a dark and that's going to produce a nice gradient very soft feel. Now if you have a a color that you're trying to go from one point and you really want to make the the, the volume the planes feel like they actually they pop off and one's going one direction one's going the other uh, the more you want it to pop off 
uh, the closer you bring your colors in together. So for instance, like here, if I go from, uh, we can even go from a dark to a light, but if I get from this, this light point directly to this dark point, um, you're really creating a totally separate plane. And this is something to really keep in mind when you're shaping anything, is that those two differences, a soft gradient or a hard edge, uh, is going to provide two different effects for you. Um, but it also really helps define uh, each of the areas. All right, so let's go ahead and take, let's see, we'll start with this area since we've been starting with it on, on the, uh, the cheek part. Uh, the opacity is currently at 16. Let's see how it's going to work. Little bit, little bit heavy. Uh, we could drop this maybe to about a uh, ten range. There we go. Now, if we go too far, and remember, we have three colors that we're trying to keep inside of this area. Uh, if we go too far over here, what happens is we actually just dole out and flatten out the colors. Be sure that you don't overstep your boundary with the new colors. Uh, you want to just take it in a little bit smaller than it was before, and then create a little bit brighter of a tone based off of it. So one of the things you'll notice when people start to paint, you'll see someone paint and then they're constantly going back and forth between their colors. A, a new painter, one of the things that happens is they make, they start off with different colors and by the time they're done with it, this may happen to you as well, is it just becomes all muddied. Uh, if it becomes muddied, you need to just stop <laughs> and you need to Go back to the basics of just uh, creating your uh, just your primary gradients. Is that if you have a dark, a medium dark, a light, or actually a medium and then a medium light and a light, uh, five five gradient levels. If you can get a five gradient level going and actually produce it and make it look good, um, then I would suggest going on. But usually people they start off with uh, like a nine gradient level and that becomes muddied pretty fast. Um, also, uh, if it's if you're new to it, uh, start off with even just a. Uh, um, I would I would suggest just a three tone, do a dark, medium, and a light. Um, best way to do it that way you know that you're you're putting in you're getting the right colors right from the start. All right, so this one might be a little bright up here. All right, so we have softer filling right there. We'll get this one, and then right on the eyelid, uh, we'll we'll say that the uh, the light's going to catch right here on this eyelid portion. And then right underneath here, we kind of want it to feel like it goes in and then up. So we're going to do a little bit of a highlight here, that way we can pull a darker shade from here. Alright, so then just continue going around it, find the areas, and uh, bring out the uh, lighter tone. Now remember, this isn't just the lighter, t lightest tone we're going to do, we're actually going to come back in with a, uh, a highlight, but we'll also come back in with some, uh, some actual colors from the light. So if your character is inside, outside, uh, that's going to definitely change the uh, the type of colors you could use for the reflections on them. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind is if your character is outside, uh, say he's standing on the ground, if he's out in the middle of a battlefield, um, let's see if you can just kind of answer this to yourself, is that if your character is there, what's the color that's going to be hitting the top of his face? If the character is sweaty, he's in the middle of battle, his face is a little bit more reflective due to the sweat, uh, specularity levels left a little bit higher on it, then there's a good chance that his face is going to be catching blues and then depending on the sun, you know, whether it's sunset or sunrise, if it's the middle of the day uh, he may even have some yellows uh, uh, casting on him. On the underplanes, uh, what would be it? Say he's on a nice grassy knoll and it's nice and pretty green, then there's a really good chance on the underplanes of him and on the undersides here you'll actually see more of a green tone. So. Be sure to keep those kind of things in mind. Don't just naturally assume and say, well, this character is going to have this color. Be sure you have a reason behind it. If you can answer it uh, and you have a good reason behind it, then, then do it. But if you're just doing it because you feel like he's supposed to do it that way or you've seen a tutorial and 
the person you saw only used a certain color, uh, you may want to go back and, and uh, give some more reason to why you're doing it. Alright, so uh, we've got this one in. Uh, it's a little bit bright, so we're going to take the opacity down just a bit. And let's see if we drop it all the way we get here. We'll start building it up a little. There we go. So we'll take it around 80 to 85 range. And if you haven't saved in a while, be sure to save. So this one's going to have our um, our brighter tones on it. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. And this layer we'll just call Skin Dark. And on the Skin Dark layer, if you notice, you have one that was Skin Dark. We have one called Skin Darker. Let's go ahead and choose the Skin Darker. Alright, and with this one, now again, we're still... We're trying not to actually take away from the blend that's happening, but we want to make sure that the crest right here uh, still kind of carries over with some of our darker tone. Um, so you can come in and you can actually just start brushing on just a little bit darker the tone right there. And then we'll fill in a little bit heavier down here inside of it. Now at this point, we want to start finding anywhere where the uh, the light source. It's going to be the darkest where it's not actually being seen very much. But we also want to try to create that really good pop between light and dark. For any of those areas that are supposed to feel like creases or really supposed to pull out in terms of the shape. Um, so this one, this layer, you may find yourself doing a little bit more of the smaller, tinier work. Uh, just to be sure that you're actually getting it. So if you notice right here between the, uh, uh, the eye socket and the cheek area, um, this is actually a really good spot to also add a little bit extra white to it. We'll pull this one in as well. So I'm just going around. Uh, again, I've got my opacity set to 10. Um, I'm just going to find any area I can that's going to be a little bit darker. Areas that are larger, that are supposed to be darker, uh, don't take a small brush into them, but actually take a large brush. That way you don't have multiple strokes, but it feels like one solid stroke going through it. few more darker strokes inside of here. Really try to sink the uh, the mouth in. Underneath the nose, again we're just kind of following those lines we had before uh, which were defining uh, where the planes were for uh, light and dark. go. So we've got some of those set in. Let's do a couple more here. Let me pull out from here and do a couple of darker strokes. Now something that uh, uh, is really important to note and I didn't want to say it until now so uh, uh, waiting until we had enough strokes on here to actually take a look at it. Um, something we haven't looked at yet um, is this element right here. Uh, what we've been doing is painting for the, uh, we've been painting you know to the lines uh, meaning that we're trying to make the image itself look good with the lines. Now if the lines are not supposed to be on your image, say for instance you're trying to paint and just take the lines away and have just the painting left, then you don't want to do it this way. Uh, if you click on the line art on the uh, visibility and turn it off, now notice looking at your image, um, there's a lot of shapes and definition that aren't there. <laughs> it's because what we're doing is we're looking at it from the perspective of where the lines are, and those are, we're saying that this is a stroke versus um, uh, it's no, it's not there. So when I look at it from here, make sure that if you're going to be going into the approach of I'm actually not supposed to have the line that you're constantly turning it off, actually defining, say for instance, the uh, the edge of the nostril wing. You want to define the parts that way. Alright, so we'll go ahead and turn it back on. 
And let's see. What else do we have? We've got um, some shadows up here. Let's go ahead and finish that part off. All right. So we'll go back in here and put a couple of heavier shadows in. Now if you're going through this and you're having some difficulties uh, either staying up with the uh, the speed of this one or you're just having difficulty trying to work your colors into it, um, that's completely fine. Uh, what you want to do is go through the rest of them and go ahead and try it. Take the approach that I'm taking with it and then when whenever when we're done with all of it, then go back, do it again. <laughs> um, the more often you do it, even for like these, if you find yourself doing this uh, maybe two or three times on the exact same image, don't grab a new image, just use the same image and uh, work with it. Once you do it enough times, you'll stop having to think about what you need to do and you'll be able to just start doing it because it's just going through the same steps over and over again. All right. So we're getting some of the smaller image, like some of the smaller detail here and there. We're not, we're not going to spend our time to get all the small details. Uh, if you want to go back and work them over, uh, you're more than welcome to. We'll set in most of the basic stuff though, so that you can have a uh, spot to go from. All right, I've got to save this. And once we're done with the darker image, uh, we're going to go to a, we're going to create a new layer. And this time around, we're going to call this one our skin. Uh, highlight and skin highlight. This one, this can be our. This can basically be our brightest tone. Uh, the highlight itself. Um, let's go ahead and click on the skin bright, and then go down to your uh, uh, color picker window, and let's actually take this closer to. We'll take it. We don't want to take it too white, but we'll take it pretty close to white. We still want to have kind of that orangish yellow mix into it, and go ahead and click OK on this one. So again, this one, uh, I'm going to keep my opacity at 10 for the moment, but I really want to make sure that the uh, the brush stroke itself is just where the highest, the part of the uh, the attenuation where it's hitting the the uh, the most. Basically, uh, some would call it the hot spot. Um, you want to just stroke it just a couple of times, maybe two or three times, maybe four times at most. Um, but go in and uh, find the areas that are just that much brighter than everything else. There we go. Another thing to uh, take note of, and this is something that I always catch myself doing, and I always have to make sure that I I don't do it unless unless it doesn't matter and I'm just having fun with it. Um, something to take note of is if you push control minus and minus and you go to a hundred percent as an artist with inside of Photoshop you got the ability to zoom in and out uh, if you know that a hundred percent is is that's the picture you're going for then make sure to actually stay at a hundred percent and paint to a hundred percent don't paint to the three four hundred percent that's really close in but paint to what everyone's gonna be looking at it as uh, if you're doing a print uh, something on print then be sure you know you may have more uh, DPI on there, so your picture is going to be larger. Print to that hundred percent line. Um, for us, I don't want to uh, work on it so small, so I'm going to continue working on it large. But make sure that just to uh, zoom out, zoom back in. Be sure you're checking on it uh, often. <laughs> All right, so we'll go back in a couple more strokes here. Um, on the nose, I'm going to do just. A little bit more on each side here, and then we'll go ahead and do a little bit more of a highlight on part of that little circle piece there, right on the crest of the nostril wing. We'll put a little bit of a, a, a glint to it. And a little piece coming up through here, and just a soft line. We don't want to define this too hard. We're still going to have to kind of take away from it a little bit. All right. Now remember, one of the other things uh, from a couple of these methods is uh, is trying to provide you with the ability to actually just do it on your own. 
uh, if you have a certain number of techniques that you know you can apply and it's going to give you a, a, a favorable result, then it kind of allows you to actually do less um, referencing. That if you were just in a meeting and you had to concept out a piece really quick, you could fall back on one of these type of styles pretty easy and just do it on your own. All right, so we've got the face here with a uh, really bright highlight going for us. Um, let's create another one. This was this one's actually going to be our skin shadow color. Oops, let's take the underscores out. All right, the uh, skin shadow color. This one, uh, this is like we were looking at before, is that we want to try to figure out what our uh, what our surroundings are. Uh, something to keep in mind is that your warm and cool colors, uh, so we haven't even started looking at those yet, we've just been placing uh, uh, just basically the flat uh, skin tones. Uh, your warm colors, your, your uh, cool colors, if we're wanting an area to recede to feel like it's going back, um, are we going to add yellows and reds? Mm, probably not. Uh, what we want to do is add a color that's going to be cool, it's going to feel like the face actually has a plane and then when you see the plane because of the cool color it's going to recede, it's going to go back into the distance. Um, purples, blues, uh, greens, you could use those and have some nice results from it. We'll go ahead and use a green tone since we were talking about earlier that the, uh, the character may be outside in the uh, green field. And let's see, our opacity is going to be set to 10 still. Uh, in this area, I'm going to go ahead and just brush it in and we'll, we'll use our opacity to go up and down with it. So we'll go ahead and just take this in here and just brush on a couple of strokes. And we'll put this on most of the under planes of the face. Anywhere there's kind of a shadow as well, you could drop in uh, just a hint of the, uh, the green for it. Alright, and definitely the down plane. Uh, also meaning that even like under here, the face is going to be catching a little bit of that green that goes under there. Now, you can see the green. It's like really obvious. Um, I'm putting it harder down here just because I want it to be in the image, but I'm going to go back to my opacity over here, and then I'll just drag it down. And we'll take it down until it feels like there's a, a bit more of a, a natural blend to it. There we go. So I've taken it down to about 64%. Uh, if yours needs up more or down more, just be sure to uh, take the opacity up or down to fit for it. All right. Now this can be the first shadow color. Uh, you could also go back in, and if you're wanting to increase it a little bit more, you could do more of a purplish blue uh, going in here, and you could actually just add that to it. Uh, chances are you'll want to do a new layer though, and just call this one. Uh, skin shadow, and if you do multiple, you may want to actually just call them like the the color. So like this would be skin shadow, color blue or purple. And we'll go in here and just real lightly brush on a little bit more color into it. And same areas. Uh, you could even put one here, maybe a little bit heavier on the side. All right. So if you have this, I want to do the same thing I did before. I'll take my opacity down and then uh, find just a really good level where it feels like it it blends and it mixes. It just really adds to both of them. Now something else to remember, up to this point, we haven't used uh, the dodge or burn tool. Um, we also haven't used any type of uh, blending modes for our brush. Um, we just simply use the regular normal mode for it. All right, so we've done the uh, skin shadow color. Let's go ahead and go to the uh, skin highlight color. So just create a new layer. We'll call this one skin highlight color. And since we know we are going to have a couple of these, uh, we'll start off with uh, red. Let me go ahead and change this one as well. So 
We'll do skin shadow color and this was green. Now the other advantage, if you notice the, the labeling that's going on here, um, if you're doing a piece for production work and you show it to your art lead or you show it to uh, the production people who are working back and forth with you, they may look at it and go, ooh, I don't like this purple color. And if you had the purple color mixed with 10 other layers and they were all flattened together, chances are you're going to have to start over again. Or you can do a different type of uh, blending modes and hue saturation to get it out. But the easiest way is if someone says, well, I don't like that purple color, I can go back in here and say, that purple blue color that I had, it's gone. And they can look at it instantly and go, oh, okay, I, I actually like this better. So be sure everything's out inside of layers. Um, and also, you know, the labeling so important. Uh, if you were to come back to this project a year from now, um, you would be thinking yourself that uh, that you actually took the time to um, create names for the layers and actually set it up that way. So let's go ahead and go back to our skin highlight color red. We'll choose the uh, the brighter skin highlight color right here. And I'm going to take my opacity down. The uh, the warmer colors really show through uh, really fast. So we'll take this down anywhere between five to eight be a good range and I'm gonna take the uh, red and actually just carry the red we're actually just gonna carry this red all the way over this area we're gonna warm all this up everywhere it kinda hits with the brighter tones we're just gonna warm it up some there we go. and then even in these areas and definitely going down the nose if you start referencing you're going to notice there's lots of people with <laughs> very red noses All right. so we've got a, a very predominant red going in there. We'll take our opacity and just drag it down the ways until it starts to blend. Um, you want it to blend uh, smoothly. You don't want things to pop off too too, uh, too loudly on it. Alright, so we'll go ahead and stick with that for a moment. We'll go ahead and create a new layer. And this time we'll call this one our skin highlight. Um, let's see, color and for this color we'll actually do a, uh, a yellowish tone so we'll say yellow and uh, we talked about before as well as that the uh, the blue tones could actually actually be coming down and hitting the surface as well um, if you're trying to create more of a calmer feel to the uh, to the individual you're painting blue is definitely a great tone to actually throw into it um, if it's in the middle of battle then there's a lot more blood rushing to the face uh, you could actually keep that red really intense on it. Um, so this one, uh, since we have the uh, yellow skin highlight here, we'll choose it. And we'll go ahead and go in here and work it over with the uh, the highlight areas. I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller though. So we'll take this in and just very, very light couple of strokes into it. We'll warm up the side of the nose just a little bit right there. All right, and then a little bit on the top right here. Okay, a couple of strokes may be a little bit too much, but overall it should work. Okay, once you have this in here, uh, if you need to take it down, you can drop it down just a little bit. All right. Now, this is going to finish off our skin highlight color. Um, now, we still have areas where, uh, like for instance, this whole eye area, if you wanted to sink this area in a little bit more, um, what's a cool color? We could choose like a, a purplish tone. Um, let's go ahead and go back down into our, our layers here and look for the one that is the skin shadow color blue. Go and select it, 
And using the uh, the bluish purple again, I'm actually going to go in here and I'm just going to stroke across this whole area. So keep the uh, the brush really large, and just go in here and just kind of stroke in here a couple of times. All right. So if you notice the uh, the more strokes I put in here on the purple, it just starts to kind of sink the eye in uh, just that much more. And you can do the same thing on both sides. All right. So going from just that kind of a general standpoint is that if there's areas that you just really need to go back and and uh, add some more depth to using your warm and cool colors. Uh, you can go ahead and go back to them now and uh, spend a little bit more time uh, polishing them off. We'll do just a little bit more here and then we'll uh, we'll move on to the next part. Alright. So let's see, we've got this one in. Why a little bit of purple in here. A little bit below here as well. All right, so we've got a good start here going for us. Uh, let's go ahead and keep working it over, though. Let's see if we can add some more stuff to it. Uh, what we want to do at this point, we're going to make a uh, new layer, but we're going to base it off of all the layers here. So. Let's be sure you follow me on this one. I'm going to select the uh, the top layer here, which is the skin highlight color, and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom one, the skin base tone. I just hold shift, left click on that one. All right, now push Control E, merge all your uh, layers together, and then push uh, actually just push Control A and Control C. And once you push that, go ahead and push Control Z, and then Control Z again. Alright, and go ahead and push Control D to drop. And then you go to your skin highlight color yellow and push Control J. I'm sorry, push Control V. There we go. And what you've done is actually flattened your image. And then you took the flattened image and uh, made a copy of it. And then you Control Z out of it so that you didn't have to worry about all your layers being flat and then pasted the image in so we'll call this one our um, uh, dodge and burn all right and then just move your uh, image over until you get it into the right spot okay now this one at this point uh, this is controlling all of it it's normal you've got your opacity at a hundred percent uh, what we want to do is just use our dodge and burn tool for a moment, your hotkeys O for it. Uh, remember you can do like for instance if you do the, uh, say we do the burn tool, if you hold alt it will go to the uh, dodge tool for you. Um, your exposure, be sure you're up around 30%, be sure to choose a uh, soft edge brush for it. Um, any areas that you want to just kind of darken a bit more, and notice the midtone is the uh, the option selected. I'm actually going to take my exposure down to, we'll say take it down to about 15 um, and be sure that you actually have your uh, mask. Make sure your mask is uh, still on for your face. Let me go back up here. All right. So the dodge and burn uh, with this one selected. Uh, just go in here and just lightly put in if you're wanting to uh, add any more darks or lights to it. Um, at least like currently with the mid-tone. I'm just going to go in and find areas that I actually wanted to make a little bit darker. Um, and at the same time, if there's areas you want to bring out, uh, just hold Alt down. And uh, when you start, I'll just make this heavier so you can see it. All I'm doing is holding Alt, and I can actually make it brighter. So we'll do this for a couple of strokes here.
All right. So we're just taking some time and uh, doing a little bit of the dodge and burn. If you want to change your uh, uh, your range, you can change it to your uh, highlights or your shadows. We'll do just a bit of a hard line right on the edge. Uh, that's all as far as we'll get to with it on that one. So if you notice doing too many strokes like this kind of flattens it out. So careful not to do too many strokes into it. Um, you've got some really good colors going for you on the inside of it. You don't want to lose the colors, but you also don't want to lose the uh, uh, the form, the volume to it. All right. So I can use the erase tool as well. That if I have certain areas where I'm like, well, I've done a little too much to it, um, I can go back in and uh, soften them, just erase them back out. You don't want to use the um, the lighten tool. Uh, uh, the dodge tool and bring it back out because you may be taking away too much color that way. Alright. So we're getting pretty close with it. Uh, again, another time to uh, check. Take your line art off. And then take a look at what your face is looking like. Uh, this may help you kind of identify, even, even though those are lines are really beneficial to this piece, um, it does kind of help you identify uh, the volume, making sure you actually do have some volume in it. All right. So one of the areas that's kind of risky right now is that it, there's a nice curve going right here, but when we get to here, it actually is almost the same color going down, which kind of flattens it out. Um, there's, this is a good opportunity to add a little additional color to it here. Um, You've got a nice, there's actually kind of a nice transition going from the uh, the edge of the nose up with a bright and then just to a medium, then back to a bright. All right. And let's go ahead and turn the line art back on. All right, so we've gotten to a point where everything is soft. We didn't start with hard strokes and do any blurs to it. We just um, kept with a uh, a soft brush and a low opacity. Um, and if you wanted to, you could use the uh, the flow and the airbrush tool as well if you're wanting to just try to build up through uh, pressure and uh, consistency on your strokes. You could do that. Uh, we've got the uh, dodge and burn on. If you want, double check. Turn it on and off. Make sure the amount that you're adding to it is the amount you actually want to add to it. If you take your line tool off, is uh, your line art again, uh, you can turn this on and off and check. So. Some of these areas look good, some are a little too dark. Um, if you find them too dark, as always, just go up to your opacity, turn it down if you need to. All right. So, we'll take this to about 90 plus. And we'll save it. Um, this is gonna finish off the airbrush uh, technique for it. Uh, if you notice, we still haven't gotten into uh, the helmet uh, and doing those pieces. We're just focusing in on the uh, the skin itself. Um, if you want to go in and, and, for instance, if you want to go in and do the eye real fast, you can do it. Uh, do, don't necessarily do just a white. You could do a, a skin tone with a uh, go down to a skin with a little bit of a, a gray white into it. We'll drop our selection. You can go down to your mask option and choose. Uh, with your wand tool, just click on the eye, it'll select those areas for you. And we'll go back up to the top here. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. So currently we've been doing skin, so a new layer, if we'd actually call this one, we would say eye. And we could say base color or base tone. And going through the same process again, we could use our brush and uh, we could just kind of brush in the tone from this. Might even want to take this up a little bit more here. There we go. So we could brush this in for the base tone and it'd just be a nice flat color for us. Um, create a new layer again. 
We'll call this one I um, we'll say medium. You can do medium or you could do bright. Whichever one you choose though, try to stick with a consistent name. Um, for ours we had, uh, I believe it was just uh, skin bright. So this would be I medium. And for the medium tone, um, actually let's, let's go ahead and just name it the way we had it down here. We'll say uh, skin medium light. So we'll do skin medium light and we'll choose a brighter color for it. We'll actually go up closer just kind of a, a, a white tone there and then take your opacity down just a bit so you can do a couple of layers of strokes on it. And knowing that our highlight is coming here and hitting, you can place one through here. We could go up to our line art if we think that we're supposed to have a little bit more of a brighter tone coming across right there. We could drop one in. And we'll put one right there. All right. We'll go back to our eye medium light, create a new layer. This will be called eye medium dark. And we can actually mix this with a little bit of a flesh tone. So we'll go somewhere around here and take our opacity lower. And then just do a couple of brush strokes on this. So we've got a little bit of a brush stroke going here, a little bit of shadow from the eyelid above. There we go. And once we have this, then we'll put in a uh, color for the eye. So we'll create a new layer and we'll just call this one uh, eye color. And just choose a color for the character. We'll go with a green tone for him. And uh, we'll go ahead and just place in a soft green to start with. Like this. And then you can go in and just do those couple of little lines that go from the eye. If you haven't drawn an eye before, then it's something you may want to do is take a little bit of time and uh, find out how all the uh, the eye elements work into it. Um, again, we're also at, what are we at, 600%? <laughs> if we shrink it back down to 100%, we'll go ahead and push Control D to drop the selection. Now, check out what it looks like at 100%. So, if you're looking at it from here and then you realize that you need to change something, then you can change it, but uh, if you're really close on it, you may start missing out uh, what the actual shapes would look like. So if we go back down to 100% again, turn off the uh, line work, we can see what the face looks like. We can turn it back on, check it out. So using the same method that we've done here, go ahead and push Control S to save. Uh, same method. Um, what you want to do is apply those same methods to the side view face right here. So doing the same stuff with all the layers. Uh, take the uh, same approach, create the same kind of layers, paint it on from there. Um, before we finish off though, let's go ahead and create a, a group folder. So go ahead and click on the, uh, the group folder inside the layers option. And we want to add all of these from eye color all the way down to um, the, actually we'll leave the skin base tone since we're going to be using it across the board. Oh, you know what, we'll go ahead and select it as well. We'll do that one over again each time. Uh, left click and drag this into group and then collapse the group. Let's call this one, uh, since we're working out on airbrush, we'll just call this one airbrush style. And push enter. There we go. So our first one's done. Uh, we'll leave this one, I'll put it above the lighting scheme, but you want to leave it below the line art. And this way, when we start in on the next one, we can just turn this one off and start in on the next one. Alright, go ahead and save this out, and this is going to finish off the airbrush style.